Um, okay, so today we are going to go through survivor's guilt. Um, and so this past week, I've um, been discussing, um, you know, what survivor's guilt is and um, how modern psychology views survivor's guilt now um, and ways in which we can move through it. Um, and so one of the ways that we can move through survivor's guilt <coughs> um, is by actually objectifying the guilt for starters, um, having a real understanding of what it is and then how it can play effect on our body, our mind and our spirit. So survivor's guilt is now seen as a symptom of PTSD or a symptom of trauma. It's not something that everybody will have effects from, um, but I would say personally speaking and for uh, every 10 clients that I work with, that about nine people will have experienced um, survivor's guilt. And um, usually what survivor's guilt can say is things like, if only I had done this, um, I should have done this, what if I did this? Um, and we can find ways to pin ourselves as the perpetrator um, and somehow feel like there was a way that we could have prevented their passing. Um, also, survivor's guilt can give us, um, you know, shame for being alive still, uh, guilt for being alive and wanting to suffer or feeling the need to be punished or to suffer. And I mean, that's, that was something that I um, felt gravely as well, like really wanting to be punished and to suffer for the passing of my brother. Um, and, you know, there's not really anything that a doctor can do for survivor's guilt. You know, you can't go to the doctor and be like, hey, doc, I'm suffering with guilt. Can you write me up a script? Um, unfortunately, it's something that we need to process and work through ourselves. Um, and the tools that I've put together for today um, can kind of really highlight that as well. So there's um, a few resources and tools that we're going to work through. So um, if you have a pen and paper, that would be really handy um, because if you don't actually want to work through it today, then you can at least take some notes. Um, so actually taking like a naturalistic view to survivor's guilt can really help us reprogram and recondition our minds and our bodies. Um, I'm really trying to discern as well that what's the truth, um, what guilt says in the mind, and then how we can um, discern the difference between the lie and the truth. And then from there, we're able to kind of go on and then recondition our bodies and reprogram our minds. So one of the ways that's really good to look at this is that emotion is energy in motion. And so if you objectify guilt in itself as energy and then this energy is sitting within the body and you know if we're not releasing it or processing it it can uh, stagnate and it will grow larger and larger and it will change forms and it will have uh, different ways of manifesting itself and creating more of uh, dis-ease within the body um, should it not be addressed then that's kind of the way that it can go um, and so we're going to look at guilt for instance in a multi-dimensional uh, manner and how it can affect us on our minds our body and our spirit. Um, okay, so if you get a pen and paper now, uh, and what we want to do is um, create three columns, the mind, <clears throat> the body, and then the spirit. Um, and so in the column of the mind, uh, we want to go through what guilt is telling us what the mind is actually telling us. So like I said before, um, that can be, I should have said that, I should have done this, I could have done this, um, I don't deserve to X, 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 um, or whatever guilt actually says to you when you think about how you feel, um, obviously after the passing of your, your loved one. So um, if you jot those down, if you don't know them all right now, then just perhaps write one and then you can work through the rest of them later. Um, and so this is how it's kind of creating this ever looping cycle in the mind. So the mind is just have these thoughts racing all the time, um, which are quite uh, detrimental to your mental health as well. You know, especially if we've gone from uh, never thinking things like this before and then tormenting ourselves with these guilty thoughts, um, you know, it can really start to become quite chronic over time and really start to play havoc on our uh, bodies and also it can kind of uh, become a part of our personality over time if it hasn't been addressed. 
So when we think of an emotion, it will change our physiology. So it will always give us, uh, the thought will give us an emotional reaction. So if, when you think of guilt, usually you will feel that in your stomach. So you might hunch over, you might feel uh, sick to the stomach with guilt. You might feel everything's kind of all held within that energy center. And so typically guilt is actually held within the second and the third chakra, which is the solar plexus and the sacral. And now what you want to do is think of the uh, organs that are surrounded in those energy centers. So you have your kidney, your, your kidneys, your liver, your stomach, um, and this can start to play out with digestion, uh, bloating, sleep, stomach issues, in indigestion. So after the passing of Jack, um, you know, I lost a ton of weight in the beginning, but when the guilt really started to kick in and I was really blaming myself, I kind of looked like I was full term pregnant because my stress levels and cortisol levels were so high and this guilt had really started to affect my digestion. So I was really, really uh, uncomfortably bloated and, uh, you know, I wasn't eating much, so it didn't really uh, add to, it didn't really all add up at the time. But now I know what I know, it's uh, an obvious link between the mind and the body. And now what can happen is spiritually. So spiritually speaking, this is like the soul, you as a, as a person, your energy levels, how you operate in the world and how you think and feel and what makes you happy is the essence of who you are and what you are. And so spiritually speaking, um, when we've left this guilt to stagnate over a period of time, that can lead to depression. It can lead to severe anxiety. Um, it can lead to all kinds of issues like panic, uh, frustration, indecisiveness, um, guilt. You've lost trust in yourself. You no longer trust yourself. So now you no longer trust the people around you or your environment. Uh, perhaps some of you might have felt that the world no longer feels safe anymore. Uh, you can kind of feel like you're on edge. And so a lot of these um, trust issues can start to arise and that can make you very anxious. And also it can, it can lead you to uh, really hide away and withdraw from your environment. It can kind of isolate you from other people. And so guilt really does start to play out in all areas of your life. You know, it's not just something that is this uh, ever looping thought that goes around and around. This is actually something that now is starting to manifest physically and start to affect your overall health and well-being. But it's also now starting to affect the essence and your spiritual self, your soul, how you, how you feel, how you, what you give and what you receive in the world. So you can see that what will happen is the thoughts that you have when you believe them that they do manifest physically they manifest into matter and what you um, um they, they manifest into matter but this will block the flow so if you actually think of um guilt for instance is like this big ball of energy that is sat inside your stomach so we hold all of our emotions in our bodies so we hold them into in our fascia, our tissues, our organs, in our cells, and uh, it becomes trapped. So this energy, when it hasn't been addressed or released from the body, it will stagnate and it will start to wreak havoc. So it can start to eat away at the tissues and uh, it can cause uh, a lack of energy that has just got the free flow momentum going through. So there's no ebb and flow of this energy. It will stay stuck. And so we're able to really unwind. We can uh, drop into our bodies at any time and we can start to address and then allow this energy to kind of thaw out and then start to uh, freely move around the body. So um, now we're gonna go into the exercises of how, the tools. <clears throat> okay, so these are brilliant. Like healing is something that, um, I mean, a healing journey is a journey. Once you've started, you're not really getting off anytime soon, you know. So um, it is kind of this everyday process. And it's really important that when we suffer, we have tools and resources ourselves rather than always having to go and find somebody that can help us. Um, it is brilliant, obviously, to have that professional help. Um, but, you know, for an everyday thing, it's quite important that we actually have our own tools as well, that we can access um, our own domain, our memory bank, our feeling body, our bodies, and actually start to address them. 
So one of the first things to do is box breathing, and uh, this will really start to calm the body, the nervous system, and it will take us into the parasympathetic nervous response as well. So we really wanna slow down before we start communicating with guilt and communicating with our emotions in our body. So what we do is we breathe in through the nose for four seconds, and then we hold for four seconds, and then we release for four from the mouth. So we go, If you do this and repeat this five or six times and really start to loosen up your body and then what will happen is you just start to exit that monkey mind, that ever fearful loop of negative thoughts of I should have done this, I could have done this and these guilty, tormenting thoughts. And so we start to become the master of our mind and not the servant. So now we're kind of giving ourselves permission to be like, hang on a minute, I'm just gonna slow down here, I'm just gonna drop into my body, just calm my mind, and then start to actually communicate with all of these emotions that are going on. Because at the end of the day, the emotions are trying to communicate with you. You know, this is why it's now giving you a physical effect or it's giving you, uh, it's manifesting itself into other ways because essentially, the guilt is getting louder and louder and louder, you know, it's saying like, please just listen to me, like understand me, release me and so on and so forth. So we wanna drop into the body, we wanna kind of do this breathing exercise and then we're gonna move forward to a little bit deeper. So first of all, energy doesn't lie, our bodies do not lie. You'll notice that if you are terrified, you'll get chills up your spine. Uh, if you feel repulsed, you'll feel sick to the stomach. Like we're constantly having our bodies and the physiology uh, communicate with us. And quite often our bodies will respond way before our mind can even cognitively catch up with what's going on. So our bodies don't lie. They don't give us these reactions for no reason. And uh, the body and the energy neither, neither does. So when we do this practice, the first thing to do is really listen to what the body's saying because it's instantaneous. It will respond to you immediately. Um, okay, so we're going to start actually questioning and then talking to this guilt. So when we drop into the body, the body doesn't communicate with us in the same way as language like our mind does. So often when we do exercises like this, it will come up with, the answers will come up with an innate knowing, a feeling, uh, or an image and so uh, our memory bank will take us back somewhere and we'll get the answers through that way not so much in language like how I'm talking to you now so what we want to do again is now create three more columns and the first column row will be what guilt says so like before for me I should have I could have I shouldn't have or why didn't I so there's some examples of what survivor's guilt can really kind of um, say to us. And then in the middle column, what we want to do is the questions. So we want to ask um, and find the truth out about what that really means. Is it true or is it not true? Because the guilt that we're experiencing in these thoughts is living in fear. Um, you know, they're fearful thoughts. They're not, um, it, it's not in the path of love whatsoever. And so we can stay really stuck and remain very trapped and uh, not very free with these thoughts whatsoever. You know, it's kind of impossible to grow and evolve when we're living in this environment in our, inside our minds. And so we want to become more like a detective. Um, so for instance, for me, um, I should have done, I, I should have done this. I should have saved my brother. I should have been there in that moment. Um, I could have stopped it from happening. And you know, these were things that I often thought of all the time. And then one of, one of the really cool, it's not cool, sorry. But one of the good things to do is obviously now start to become a detective on that. So find all the avenues for truth. Of course, I wish that I could have been there. I wish that I had an opportunity that I could have done something. Um, of course, I wish that I should have done X, Y, and Z. But the truth, in the all, in in all honesty, is that I couldn't. I couldn't. I wasn't there. There was nothing that I could have done in that time. I did not know. There was no phone call before. There was no. There was no. If you do this, then this won't happen. There was no other option. 
So the truth of the matter is, is that yes, of course, that I wish I could have done it, but there was no possible way that it would have happened. It did not happen like that. And so actually accepting that as the truth is now you becoming the master and then reconditioning that lie. Of course, it's a wish that we would have had, but it's not the truth and it's not the case. And so what happens is when we start to separate them and then when we're the ones that end up saying, you know what, that isn't the truth, of course I wish it was, what we're doing is we are reconditioning and we are reprogramming and we are moving into the path of accepting the fact that we really couldn't. And we're accepting the fact that there was nothing we could have done. And this is the peaceful avenue and this is the truth and this is the path of love, not the fear. And so what happens is reconditioning over and over and over again like this, you end up firing new neural pathways, you end up changing, you're altering your brain chemistry, you end up moving this energy from the body and you're no longer trapped back there. You've already grown and you've evolved and you've chosen another avenue. And it's something that is very simple, but some of the simplest things are the most healing things. Um, you know, we always t tend to be looking on the outside for this kind of stuff, but all of the truth and all of the answers actually lie deep within us. It's just that we have to do the groundwork and we have to do the digging to find it. And so sometimes this is an exercise that you might need to do again and again and again before uh, it becomes solid and it becomes cement. And then this is the only way that you think. So now we're starting to discern the difference with uh, what's true and what's not true. And when we found the truth, this is the part that we accept and this is the part that we uh, find the most peace in. So now we still have this energy. So cognitively we understand. So we've also got the self-awareness now and we understand that actually this is this. But now we actually still wanna communicate with the energy because the energy is still stat stagnant that stagnant within the body so for instance uh like i said before let me just have some water also does anyone have any questions yet okay oh there's so many people here <laughs> um okay so with this breathing technique as, as well, just continue to do this and then really just give your body permission to, to feel and to communicate with you. Really just sink into the body and allow your body to just uproot whatever it needs to uproot. So continue with that breathing. And now you wanna communicate with guilt as if you're talking to a person, as if you're actually having a conversation with another person. And so I always start with this. Okay, guilt, where are you in my body? and your body will react straight away. Like I can feel, I can't actually feel guilt in my body, but my stomach's reacting because it knows that that is where guilt is, was held or usually is held. So anyways, so now we can feel the guilt inside our stomachs, for instance. And you're like, okay. So now what you wanna do is now you've located the guilt, you've already identified that the guilt is a liar, or the guilt isn't true and it's the path of fear. So you really wanna be able to excavate that guilt. And now you wanna give yourself permission to actually start releasing this guilt. And so now what you do is you take a really big deep breath in through the nose. And then I want you to imagine that you're wrapping your breath around that guilt, you're actually bubbling it up. So now you've got the guilt contained within your breath. And so now what you wanna do is you wanna actively start pushing this guilt away with your breath. So it would go like this. And it's kind of like peeling back the layers of an onion. And so it is a gentle exercise, but usually because now you're in direct communion with yourself and this feeling guilt, it will start to bring up emotions. And so don't be worried if you do start to feel emotional. If you feel far too emotional, then just slow down, take a break, and you can come back to it at any other time because guilt is one of the hardest emotions actually to move through after we've lost a loved one to suicide. And this is why this is, now as this community is building, I'm going to guilt first. Um, 
So what you want to do um, is wrap the breath around and you really want to hold it. So you kind of want to tense that part of your body. So really tense your stomach and squeeze your abdominals and really push and squeeze. So you're really containing this guilt inside this energy bubble. And then you want to start pushing it away quite forcefully with your breath. And this will start to actually move energy through your body. You will feel it shifting, you will feel it moving, and you might even start to feel some emotions that are arising. But what happens now is that you've actually become the master of your mind. You've become the master of your physiology. You've created a new thought, which has now become a new belief, which has now become a new reality. And when you start to push this energy away, this is like somatic unwinding, somatic healing. The chakras and all of these energy centers, they now start to balance and heal themselves. They start to restore themselves. So you've not only helped yourself on a mental or emotional level, but you're actually helping yourself now on a physical and spiritual level as well. So all parts, all facets of your body are starting to improve and heal because you have been the one who is sovereign and you are the one who's become the master over all of it. And so actual self-healing and taking this naturalistic approach is one of the most powerful ways because no one else is gonna come and do this for us. You know, This really is a process that we have to go through ourselves. And it's not enough saying, don't feel guilty, I shouldn't feel guilty, you don't have to feel bad about that, you don't have to feel bad about this, because the truth of the matter is, this energy's got this whole other mind of its own. Guilt has got its own trajectory, it's got his own, his own mission and its own path, and you know it really can start to uh, play and wreak havoc on our minds and on our bodies. And, it starts to filtrate out into all other avenues of our lives. You know, when you're, when you're vibrating at this kind of frequency of guilt uh, and how you perceive the world, and this is the lens in how you look at the world, you know, you, we, we can start to see things like friendship fails or job losses or lo relationship fall, fallouts and work and all sorts of things can start, to, uh, c can start to be affected. So really you wanna become someone who is just like, wants to communicate, wants to participate and really has that desire to take control over these emotions that are happening. And there are many that we work through as well and you know, it doesn't really ever go away, but it's not to say that we won't ever feel uh, guilt or pain or, or grief or anything like that, but what it does mean is that now you have become someone who has got tools and who's got resources. You know, you've got this kit bag now that's like the next time these emotions arise, you're able to delve in and you know what to do about it. You become non-reactive, you become focused. And so for instance, for me now down the track, when I experience certain emotions or things like that, I can just go back and then I'm more strong. I've trained my mind to become so much stronger, so much more focused and non-reactive. And so it's really good because your energy and your frequency starts to become a lot higher. Your energy expands. You've reconditioned yourself. You've aligned to the truth. And so all of a sudden you're feeling like a more vibrant and happier being. And when you, uh, there's a saying and it's like, there is no path to happiness but happiness is the way. And so there is nothing outside, there's nowhere to go to seek this. It's just that you have to do that work yourself and then when you've done that, you will find that way to being happy. You have to be happy before you can ever find happiness. The more that you find the peace within yourself, the more peace that you're gonna see on the outside. So it does all start with us. Um, and so the other thing for those of you that are here as well, you know, I speak quite candidly about connecting with my brother in spirit. And uh, this is something that I do every day. And, you know, I have lots of practices and things like that in, in, in place. So if you are somebody who does wish to connect to your loved one or you have an interest in it or you do believe that or you're exploring that avenue, you know, when you actually move through these lower emotions, like guilt and shame, you know, they're two of the lowest and most densest, most difficult emotions for a human to possibly hold on to. Uh, and you'll know what that feels like when you've lost someone to suicide. But when we actually move through these emotions, because there is no other way around it, we have to move through it. But when we do, what happens is our energy becomes so much higher and then we become more in the frequency of love. Where our loved ones have gone and passed over to, they're only in the frequency of love. They don't have these dense bodies that are keeping them stuck anymore. So their frequency is so much higher. 
you know, for when we're operating at these low frequencies, it's very difficult for us to become a prime match. Um, it's really hard for us to actually connect like that. So when we actually heal, we're bringing them closer. We're connecting to them. This is, we're moving up into a higher frequency, into these higher vibrational tones, and this is where they are. So not only are we actually healing ourselves on our body, our mind, and our spirit, our overall health and well-being, but we're actually drawing them closer to us. We have to go up, you know, we can't, ex we, they can't always come down to us. They're vibrating and flying around at the speed of light. So for us to really do this work is so beneficial on so many levels. Um, and you know, these tools are very valuable and helpful for you to actually practice this mindfulness and for you to become uh, the master of your mind. But actually when we do the sessions in my uh, eight week healing journey, moving through these emotions, we do dive a lot deeper um, and actually drop a lot deeper into the body and excavate this energy. But for every time that we're not doing that,